Hey guys, Sun here. I'm a privacy and a security researcher and you're watching The Privacy Guides. In today's episode, I want to discuss how Signal is so very different from SMS and iMessage and why you should consider switching if you care about privacy. Um, this episode will be a bit dense. I have a lot of things that I want to share with you and yeah, without further ado, let's, let's get started. So obviously on your phone, you can already send text messages through SMS and you can already make calls uh, so what is the difference? Uh, why would we actually want to go about installing Signal instead of just using our phone? I mean, that's a great question. And in order to answer this question, we need to start breaking down what's happening when you actually send a text message on your phone. Uh, so your phone uses the GSM network to connect through your carrier to an international network of carriers. And the way that your phone identifies with your carrier is through the SIM card. So all phones have a SIM card. Uh, this one happens to be a physical SIM card that I can actually remove from my phone. And I'm not sure if this will focus. Uh, I'll leave it there for a second here. So I'm sure you've all seen uh, SIM cards in the past. So what is a SIM card? Well, the SIM card is a small memory device that stores something called the International Mobile Subscriber Identity or IMSI. That is a unique identifier to that SIM card and that's what identifies you onto your carrier's network. So what happens when you pop this into your phone is your phone will broadcast that to your carrier and it will say, hey carrier, here's my uh, IMSI. Can you please bind this device to my phone number? This works in a way that's very similar to the domain name service, DNS. So when you wanna go onto a website, say you wanna go onto Reddit, well, you don't have to remember the IP address of Reddit, right? You just remember reddit.com, put that in your browser, and your browser will do the work of knowing where that should resolve, you know, and it will resolve to a specific IP address. Well, IP address is, uh, IP addresses are very similar to the IMSI uh, identifier that's in your SIM card. And your phone number is very similar to reddit.com. So I hope this is clear. Uh, if it's not, uh, you can drop things in the comments and I'll try to make things clear. So when your phone is connected to your carrier, it's like, hey, here is my IMSI. Can you please bind me to that phone number? And once this is done, when you send a text message, what happens is that text message is encrypted, not the payload itself, but the communication between your phone and your carrier is encrypted. And that message is sent to your carrier's infrastructure and your carrier will route that information to the recipient's carrier and then that carrier will encrypt the uh, radio frequency con uh, communication between it, its antennas and that recipient's phone and then the person receives the message. Whew. Jesus. So what's happening here is your phone is using some level of encryption that's part of the GSM protocol to encrypt radio frequencies going between your phone and your carrier's antenna. And that also happens at the other end. Everything between, uh, everything that happens on your carrier's infrastructure and on your recipient's carrier's infrastructure, that's up to them. A lot of this is routed through the internet right now and I'm guessing it uses TLS encryption and stuff like that. What we need to know here is the message itself is not encrypted. So your phone is sending the message in clear text over an encrypted pipeline. What that means is, uh, I mean, anywhere in your carrier's infrastructure, that message can be uh, read in plain text by your carrier. And that's pretty shitty. Uh, the way we, we like to mitigate that is by using something called end-to-end -end encryption. Now, someone could be intercepting the radio frequencies and it's actually quite feasible to hack the, the payloads that are going through the radio frequencies. And that's something that's, uh, being discussed by a bunch of security researchers. I'll drop a few links in the description if you're into that. The thing that you want to keep in mind here is the GSM network by default uses encryption keys for the radio frequencies that are up to uh, 64 bits. And that is actually under what the NIST uh, consortium, I think, maybe I'm messing up that word, recommends, which is a minimum of 112 right now because supercomputers are able to decipher uh, encryption at that level of bits. Uh, so if you're using your phone on the GSM network, by default, your text messages and your phone calls are not encrypted on your device. They're only routed through some 
shitty level of encryption pipeline to the recipient. So SMS on its own should not be considered safe. To make things worse, uh, your SIM card uh, and its IMSI, I mean, that is something that someone can use social engineering to ask your carrier to register your phone number to another SIM card. And that person could hijack you know, your, your identity. That, that's something that's called a SIM port hack. And it's actually way more common than we would like it to be. So the thing is your carrier actually decides where to route your calls and your text messages and someone can hack your identity and have them routed to someone else's SIM card. That's why I recommend never using SMS two-factor authentication. I have two episodes on that on this channel. So you can have a look at those if you're interested. Whew, Jesus, that's a lot of information. Hopefully a few of you are still listening and are interested. Uh, so SMS is really, really bad. It has no end-to-end -end encryption. There's no way for you to know that you're actually talking to the person that you think you're talking to and your carrier can see the information in clear text and attackers can really easily, well, really easily, not really easily, but it can decipher the information at the radio level frequency. Uh, and they can also do this uh, hacking your carrier's infrastructure. And I mean, so essentially SMS and normal phone calls should be considered almost public domain in my opinion. Now, what about iMessage? What does iMessage do that's different than SMS? Well, iMessage adds end-to-end -end encryption and that is super important. What that means is when you're sending a message to someone, uh, your phone will set up a handshake with that recipient and the conversation will be encrypted on your phone and decrypted on that person's phone. What that means is your carrier cannot see this information. In theory, no one in the middle can see that information. So that's actually a huge leap forward. And bear in mind that this information is sent over LTE usually or 3G or 2G. So 2G, 3G and LTE all have uh, radio frequency level encryption as well. So you're essentially piping an encrypted payload through an encrypted pipeline that makes it much, much, much safer. Now, there's a lot of problems with iMessage. One of them is you have no way of confirming that the person at the other end is who they say they are. So when you're using, well, using, when you're using PGP or when you're using Signal, you can actually see the fingerprint of that handshake you have with that person and that fingerprint will match at both ends. So there's a way for you to actually confirm the identity of the person when you're beside that person. So when you're physically with that person, you can confirm that you have the same fingerprint. And from that point on, from a cryptographic standpoint, you know that that person is who they say they are. That means that we've just moved the threat model from InfoSec to OPSEC. I have an episode that discusses the differences between InfoSec and OPSEC. I'll link it up here or there or in the description. Um, so iMessage lacks uh, the ability for us to identify the person from a cryptographic standpoint. The other shortcoming of iMessage, according to a lot of researchers, is it doesn't support something called perfect forward secrecy. What that means is once a handshake is established, all of the messages that are sent to that person are encrypted using the same key. And what that means is if someone gets access to your phone or is able to decipher that key, that person can decrypt all of the messages historically. And we know that the NSA is monitoring and gathering a whole bunch of information about pretty much everyone around the world. So that means that if ever they want to break in, they only have to hack that key once and they can decrypt all of the information. I'm not sure what the retention policy is of Apple on their servers, but I'm also guessing that they're keeping the data for much longer than they need. So with that in mind, there's one last thing I need to mention. The encryption is done using 128 bit versus signal that is using 256 bit. So not only is iMessage lacking the ability to identify the person using cryptographic fingerprints, but it's also using shitty, well not shitty, but uh, not as strong encryption, 128 versus 256, and it doesn't support perfect forward secrecy. So for these reasons, I consider iMessage to be uh, not a great choice when it comes to privacy, 
uh, I would not recommend anyone with secrets to use I iMessage. The last thing uh, that I want to mention here, well, actually, I have two other things. I'll start with this one, uh, metadata. So you've heard metadata a lot if you've uh, inquired about Snowden revelations. Metadata is what most of, like, the NSA is collecting metadata about pretty much every text message and call and internet requests around the world. So the metadata is, if we think about the postal system, if you're looking at an envelope, you have a to and from address, you have you know specifics to the envelope, is it red, is it blue, what's the size of the envelope. So if you know about these things, even if you cannot see the content of the envelope, which might be encrypted, well, you know that two people are having a conversation and you can start mapping the social graph of the person. So in SMS and iMessage, metadata is prevalent. There's a whole bunch of it and it's being collected by the governments and stuff like that. Uh, Signal uses something called sealed sender and the metadata is actually stored within the encrypted payload. And I just mentioned it's encrypted using 256 bits and that is incredibly harder to hack than 128. In theory, it's impossible at this point in time. Uh, and it's using perf and Signal is using perfect, perfect secret, perfect forward secrecy, sorry about that. So even if someone was able to decipher something, they could only de decipher part of the story. So SMS and iMessage have a whole bunch of metadata and that's leaving a bunch of breadcrumbs about your social graph as where Signal does not have uh, that kind of metadata. The only metadata that uh, Signal uses is the two uh, you know, uh, address. That's where the packet, the payload should be sent. Uh, where it's coming from is not part of uh, un unencrypted uh, metadata. Now, uh, another thing is, is the content being exchanged, the, the content of the conversation, is that ephemeral? Is it lying somewhere on a server ready to be subpoenaed or is it ephemeral? Is that information lying on your phone and your phone is ready to be seized or is it ephemeral? As I mentioned in the episode on Firefox where we set up Firefox to be pretty ephemeral, when you, when you quit Firefox, all of your cookies and stuff like this are flushed and we're not keeping history. What that means is if ever your computer is seized and it was shut down, well, the person won't have access to your browsing history and stuff like that. Or once you're logged in on a website, well, that person will not be logged in because all logins are killed when cookies are deleted. The same rules apply to messaging. If you have a private conversation on your phone, well, bear in mind that that, conver that conversation is in clear text on the phone. If someone can have access to your phone, sees your phone, and either forces you to decrypt it using your fingerprint or uh, brute forces the encryption, well, that person could have access to all of that conversation. So Signal has a feature called uh, disappearing messages that you can configure so that the messages can only be kept by the client for X amount of time. So if something is extremely private, you can set that to five seconds. It means once the recipient looks at the message, five seconds later, it's flushed. Now, the recipient could take a screenshot, so it's not something that protects us from OPSEC threats, but it does from InfoSec threats, and most OPSEC threats if you trust the person at the other end. Um, so yeah, so that pretty much sums it up. There's one last thing or two last little things. First of all, uh, well, actually, I'm saying it's a last thing, but it's quite, quite, quite important. That's open source. SMS is a world standard that's pretty well documented, but it's it's outside of the scope of you know what we as developers or researchers can actually dig our hands in. That's not totally true. I'll take that back. GSM is just a piece of shit from a security and privacy standpoint, so I won't even consider it here. Uh, it, I'm really, really thankful that it exists. It's a great transport layer, but from a privacy and cryptography standpoint, it's extremely weak. Now, iMessage is much better, but it's proprietary, so it's really hard for security researchers, academics, to poke holes in it and really have a good idea of what's happening behind the scenes. That's where a piece of technology such as Signal Signal is open source. Signal is peer reviewed like crazy. So we know that the technology itself is pretty well thought out and is secure. So you absolutely wanna make sure that an app such as Signal that's designed to have private conversations by text, by voice, by video is 
really well documented and is secure. So you want that to be open source. Now, the last thing but not least is you want that kind of app, you want your messaging app to be convenient and usable. And that's where Signal is such an amazing piece of work. Signal is so easy to use. It uses the same logic than any other messaging app. I got my mother and my dad on it and they're using it like, I mean, they already knew how to use it. I mean, it's such predictable user experience nowadays that migrating from you know SMS or iMessage to Signal is a real piece of cake. Um, so yeah, I hope you found this insightful. Uh, in the next episode, I'll go about configuring it uh, just for people who may not want to you know, try it out themselves. They want to see it before. So I'll set things up. I hope you like that. If you're into privacy and you haven't subscribed to this channel yet, smash that subscribe button, drop a like for the YouTube algorithm. Uh, and yeah, I'll see you in the next one.